I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna turn this log into a bench with hidden storage. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I don't really know how this is gonna turn out. This is a piece of wood that my grandfather gave me before he passed. He had it in his shop for a really long time, so it's nice and dry. I don't know what kind of wood it is though. So I think what we're gonna do is turn this into a bench. I don't really have a plan for it. I haven't done any sketching or anything like that. We're just gonna kind of wing it. The only thing I do know is that this is gonna be the top. It's gonna have some sort of a steel leg assembly on each side or embedded in it. And I want there to be some hidden storage on the inside. So I think the first step is gonna be to flatten the top. That should make the whole thing a little bit easier to deal with. All right, let's figure this thing out. I put a couple of bricks under both sides of this to hold it in place and went at the top with a hand plane and some chisels. Also, just to point out, this is probably not the most effective way to flatten this top, and this is probably not the right plane to use. I probably don't have the right chisels, but this is actually all that I have on hand, so I'm just kind of using what I got. There are always better tools to be able to accomplish a task, but you have to use what you have at your disposal. So, in this case, it's just going to take a while. After a couple hours, it's looking pretty good. It's not perfectly flat, but it really doesn't need to be yet. If you did need to flatten a slab, probably the best way to do it would be to use a jig and a router to just go back and forth and get it completely the same level everywhere. But in this case, I just wanted it roughly flat so I could flip it over and take it through the bandsaw. I wanna make a cut about right here, all the way across, so the top section will come off. But this piece of wood is too tall to push through my bandsaw long ways. And the reason I didn't put it through my planer to clean this off is that this is too tall this way to fit through my planer. So my plan is to flip this over, take it through the bandsaw, and cut this right in half, and then on each one of those two halves, run it through and cut off this section. Let's try it out and see if it works. I ran this through the bandsaw. Now I didn't have quite the right blade for this. The one I had worked, but a thicker blade would work better for resawing. I just took my time to make sure to push this through and not force it because I didn't want to snap the blade and I wanted to try to keep the cut as straight as possible. I moved over the fence to cut off the slices on the top of both of these pieces. You can see a little bit of smoke coming up in different places when it burns and that told me that I was pushing a little bit too hard and I needed to slow down a little bit. At least on my bandsaw, if I try to use the fence, the wood will often try to wander away from the fence once it gets past the blade. As long as you're aware of this and you can work against it, it works pretty well. Making cuts like this by eye often works better. Bonus points to you if you saw the mistake that I just made, but if not, let me explain what I did. I was more worried about the camera than the actual piece of wood, so when I picked it up and put it through the saw, I wasn't paying attention to which face I was cutting. In this case, it matters. So I cut off the wrong side of the piece of wood. It's not a huge deal. I'm gonna glue it back on and clamp it down, and then I'll go back and recut it again. Mainly, it's just a hassle more than anything else. So I covered these faces with a whole lot of glue, spread it out really evenly, and then added some clamps. I let it dry for a couple of hours and then went back and cut the correct face. Eventually I ended up with this, and it was time to join those two slabs back into a single slab. I lined them up and made some marks to use for a biscuit joiner. Now the biscuits here don't add a lot of strength, but they do help align the pieces when you glue them back together. So I added some glue down into the slots that I'd cut and along the faces. I added the biscuits into the slots and pressed both pieces back together. The pencil marks also help you get it aligned. You want to make sure that it's aligned before you start clamping it down. Once you do, it turns back into a single slab. I put clamps on the top and the bottom to make sure that it didn't warp in either direction as well. Then it was time to hollow out the center of this section. I measured in from both ends of both pieces just to give myself a point of reference, and then used a circular saw to make some cuts there. These are my starting points. I wasn't sure how hard this wood was and how well I would be able to cut it away with a chisel, so I cut from line to line to kind of give myself some marks and to split the grain there. I went at it with a chisel and hammer and knocked away a single piece, and I found that it was going to be really tough to do this without cutting some slots. So I took the circular saw again and went all the way down the piece, cutting about every inch. Obviously the more cuts you make with the circular saw, the smaller the pieces are going to be, which is going to make them easier to take out. For about an hour, I used a chisel and a hammer and just cut out as much of this area as I possibly could. This was a lot of work, but it was actually really rewarding as well. Eventually, I tried to flatten out the space as much as I could, but I didn't want to get it perfectly flat. It just wasn't really that important. For the second piece, I did the same thing. But this time, I just used a hammer to knock as much of this out as possible before using the chisel. This was way faster with basically the same result in the end. 
While I'm doing that, I wanted to do a quick ad for myself. You guys may not even realize this, but at my website, I like to make stuff.com, I sell all sorts of awesome t-shirts and stickers like this one. It's brand new. I also sell digital plans for a lot of the projects that I make so you can make them yourself. Also, signing up for my email newsletter is the best way to be sure that you never miss a single bit of content that I put out, whether it's videos or podcasts or anything else. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Go check it out. I like to make stuff.com. I got these pieces in the right orientation and then I made marks on the top and the sides of both ends just to make sure that I was cutting in the right places. Then I took these to the table saw, put the blade at one inch and the fence one inch from the blade. I ran these pieces through and cut out a one inch square on the end of both pieces. This was a little bit sketchy because none of the faces were flat so the wood didn't sit against the fence or the tabletop perfectly flat. If you're doing anything like this, be really careful because it can catch and kick back very easily. With these cuts made, I lined the pieces up and then drew marks on both ends just to add some biscuits like I did before to reattach these pieces. When I went to glue these pieces up, I made sure not to let the glue seep down into where the bark is. It would be really difficult to remove any of the glue that had squeezed out into that bark area, so I just made sure to cover all the surfaces as well as possible. I put in the biscuits and reattached these pieces and then added clamps to the flat side to hold them together. This worked pretty well, but it was actually a really weird shape to clamp. I also noticed that some of the bark was coming loose from the bottom where I'd cut it. So I squirted some glue underneath the bark in between it and the wood and then used a strap to hold them together while it dried. Then it was time to make the steel frame for this bench. I used my new miter saw to cut the steel for the first time and they're not a sponsor for this video, but I have to say I was really impressed with how well it worked. With other saws in the past, I've had trouble with deflection when you're cutting an angle, but this one actually cut a perfect 45. I measured out the short side of this piece of steel to match the width of the log. Then I cut the other miter on the other end. I did a test fit with this piece to make sure that it fit inside the log, and then I just copied its size onto another piece of steel. I cut this one down as well, and these will act as the top and the bottom. I followed the same procedure to do the uprights for each one of the frames and ended up with eight pieces to make a frame for each end of this log. These are a little bit taller than they are wide, so I made sure to lay them out to make sure that I was grabbing the right pieces. I took the pieces from the top and then drilled three holes down into them. I used step bits here just to get a bigger hole at the top and a smaller hole at the bottom. I laid out the frame and made sure that all the corners were square before putting a tack onto each corner just to hold the pieces in place. Once I had a nice tack there, I went back and did full welds on the inside and the outside of all of the corners. I like frames like this to be flush on the outside, so I took a flap disc to each one of these welds to get them completely flat. On the inside corners, I wasn't quite as worried, but I used a file just to try to wear them down a little bit. Then I went over the entire thing with the flap disc really lightly just to remove the mill scale. Then I made another frame the exact same way for the other side. I flipped over the log and fit these pieces into the gaps that I had cut. Once they were in place, I measured and marked the center of each one of these and then measured the distance between them. I just cut another piece of square tubing with a flat end and fit it in between these two. It was easier in this case to hold them in place with clamps and tack them before doing full welds rather than trying to use the welding table. This way, I knew that they were perfectly square to each other and in the right position. I ground this one down and shined it up with the flap disc just like I did the other frames. Then I took it outside and added a couple of light coats of semi-gloss black. And while that dried, I got out the hand plane to completely flatten the top. Actually, I didn't fully flatten it. There were some areas that were pretty low, and so for those, I used an orbital sander just to round them over. You're just gonna be sitting on this, so really, I just wanted to smooth it out. To hold the seat panel in place, I made a couple of cleats out of hardwood just to attach to each end. I cut curves on the bandsaw on each end of these so that they would fit down in the cutout that I'd made on the inside of the log. Once I had them flush with the top surface, I added a little bit of CA glue to them and then activator to the seat. I carefully lined it up and set it down and those pieces bonded immediately. This glue really just held these pieces in place while I pre-drilled holes and drove in some long screws to permanently attach them. Then it was time to assemble everything. The easiest way I found to do this was to set the frame on its side and then wedge the log in from the backside. It was tight enough that it held in place so I could drive in the screws. Remember how I made those larger holes on the top of the frame? That's so I could drive in a screw through the hole in the bottom into the wood. I used pretty long screws, so this thing really locked together once I had all the screws in. I flipped it up and put on the top. Then I applied some finish to all the surfaces except for the bark. And that was it. 
I'm really happy with how this thing turned out, especially considering the fact that I didn't even sketch anything to start with. This was all made up on the fly and I just kind of figured it out as I went along, which is really fun sometimes. When you're using logs like this that are not milled down, it's really fun to work around their shape rather than forcing the wood to work into the shape that you want. In this case, I just measured as I went and made the steel frame to fit alongside the wood. And speaking of the metal frame, I was a lot more comfortable using the welder this time and I was really happy with how this frame came out. That's good because because hopefully that'll motivate me to do more metal projects in the future. The more I use the tools, the more comfortable I am with them. If you're like me on the East Coast, you may have noticed that there's a lot of trees being knocked down right now from Hurricane Matthew or another hurricane that's come through. And if you go around and collect some of that lumber, you can use it for projects like this after it dries out. Just remember, you don't always have to go to the big box store to get the wood that you use for your projects. I hope you like this one. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. I've got all sorts of other videos that you might be interested in. Metalworking, woodworking, electronics, 3D printing, all sorts of stuff. So be sure to check those out and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.